Hi everyone, this is Deco Graphics Studio and in today's class we're going to be going over this grasshopper script that allows you to create a whole house uh, envelope and entire building. So this is using Rhino and Grasshopper and it looks a little bit complicated and intimidating but to be honest if you just uh, go over the steps and follow along you should be able to achieve some pretty cool results and you'll be able to understand the software a lot better. So I'm going to show you here, uh, we're going to start basically using a curve. So right now this is a 20 foot by 20 foot uh, square. I'm using feet and inches. Uh, and so if I go ahead and show you the preview of what it's going to look like in the end, it's, it basically creates the walls, the outside material, it creates the foundation, creates a parapet, and it creates you know all of the components that create an entire building. And that's done by you know, uh, adjusting these parameters here. And so it looks a little bit complicated, but we'll go through all the steps in this class. So let's get started here. As I mentioned, we do start with a curb here. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that shape. It can be any shape. And that curve, we can set this curve, right click here, set one curve, and then we're able to see that the house or the building is going to be created off of that curve. So what I've done here is I've just started a completely new project and what I'm going to start doing is on layer one I'm going to call it footprint and so I can use that layer to create let's say a 20 by 20 footprint which we can start could be our jumping off point to start creating the the exterior walls so what we're gonna do here is double click inside of the grasshopper in here and type in curb and as you can see that gives us this curve component now as you can see it just says curve but if we go here to display and we see that we want to draw the names we want the icons that's you know that's one of the things I'd like to do is make sure that it displays all those things just so it's easier for you to uh, be able to distinguish the component so we have this one and we will select this curve right click on here and set one curve what that does is that now it takes this geometry inside a rhino and brings it into grasshopper now that we have this curve here we can start creating the thickness of the wall. So we're going to offset this curve. And as you can see, it's offsetting. That's the green curve is the original one. And it's offsetting to the outside. So it all depends on which way, which um, direction you want to offset the, the wall. I want to offset it in. So we'll, we'll have to go so we'll have to flip the direction of the curve and so we'll do we'll put that in here and that way when it offsets it offsets in and we're going to do a 6 so that will we'll offset 6 to the inside and that's looking good so now we know that those are going to be the uh, the thickness of the wall and uh, to make sure to to give it some height we're gonna first do a boundary surface and we're gonna take the initial curve and the outside curve and we're gonna flatten it and that'll give us kinda that space this gives us this plane here which now we're going to extrude and we need to extrude in a certain direction so we need to extrude up in the Z direction and we're going to extrude 120 
and we successfully have the wall thickness that we can adjust here. So we'll keep that at 6. Um, and now we have that. So one of the things you're going to want to do as you move along, as we move along is take the work that you've done you know previously in the in the chain of command here um, take it and then hide it so you unpreview it that way it doesn't start getting uh, messy and if if you're not too familiar with you know all how all these things work you'll get familiar in time just follow along and make sure to you know just look here and kind of follow along on the steps and you should be fine so one of the things to unpreview more than one thing at a time is you can select them more than one do a spacebar and then do this one which is just disable preview and so now we have that exterior wall uh, the the wall that's offset in and it's going to give you you're going to be able to adjust the the height What I'm also going to do at the same time as I kind of work, I'm going to create these panels. And the panels allow you to kind of do some text rating. And that's what I'm going to be using to kind of label and describe what the different uh, sliders are going to be used for. So one of them is going to be wall thick thickness. Yeah, there we go, wall thickness. Um, and then we'll put that right here because that's going to be what's going to determine the wall th thickness and then we can take this one copy paste and then we can put that here and this is going to be wall height and so we know that that's going to be part of the component and one way to kind of keep things organized is we take all of this and we do control G or you could just you know if you want to I think you could spacebar and you may be able to group it this way spacebar and then group or you could just do control G to group it together so now we know that this entire thing is going to determine the wall so now that we have the wall let's uh, create the foundation so the foundation is basically using that same the same curve the original outside curve and I'm going to just extrude it down so let's do an extrusion in the Z direction so we're gonna take that initial curve extrude it down so this is an extrusion command take the original curve and it's gonna extrude it up a little bit you see that so what we want to do is go negative because we want to extrude down so we plug in the Z vector you plug it into the negative and then you put it here and now we can create a slider so I'm gonna just copy um, this one and this one copy paste and so now I have a slider that says wall thickness we'll call it slab lower slab So as you can see now it extruded that this curve it extruded it down but it extruded it and it left it open so to make sure you close that down is you double click here and type in cap holes so what it does is it takes this and it puts a lid at the top and at the bottom but it still keeps this one so go here spacebar and then unpreview it so now we have the floor slab there now one of the things you're going to want to do is the floor slab six inches we want to create the footings now and to do that there's a few other steps we want to move what we want to do is take that initial curve move it down and then use that to create the footing so we're going to take this curve we're going to bring it here and we're going to move it down the same thickness that we 
extruded for the slab, which is the six inches. And we're gonna go down so we can use this component here. And now you can see we have this curve. We successfully brought it down. Now we're gonna take this curve and we're gonna offset. And it's offsetting out. So what we want to do is we want to, once again, like we did at the beginning, flip the direction of the curve if you want to offset in, which we do for the for the slab or for the um, for the footing. And so we put in, we plug that in here, and we can do now the the let's see the footing. I'm going to copy paste this, and here on the slider. I'm going to put a max of 36 and we'll, we'll do a 24 we'll call this a footing so this slider is going to determine the footing width in the yeah the width so then we have here the distance so now we have now that we took that geometry that we brought down we offset it and now we have these two um, We have these two curves that we can use to uh, create a footing. So let's once again create a boundary surface. Right click here and flatten. What it's going to do, it's going to take these two and create that um, the plane in between them. So let's plug this here and let's plug that there. And now we can once again extrude in the Z direction going down. So let's see, let's do this extrude this surface, put it here. Which direction? In the Z direction, we want it to come down. So we go negative because we want to bring it down and extrude it what thickness we'll say we'll do once again a 24 so the footing um, width footing depth And so we have a footing that we can adjust the thickness of. So we can say 12 inch uh, wide and 24 inch deep with a six inch floor slab or five inch floor slab. And then in the end, we can union. We can basically merge this and this together. So let's do that. And then if you right click here and flatten, it'll take both of them and put them together. And so you can take these things that you did previously. And we can go ahead and space bar and unpreview them. That way all we're previewing is the foundation and the wall. And now we can do as we did on the last one, we can group this together. So let's clean it up. That's pretty good. So this concludes the foundation portion. All right, in this portion, we're going to be creating kind of the, the, the roof portion. And so let me show you here. As you can see, this curve that we have here in Rhino is what we're going to be using that's going to be kind of our jumping off point and that's what we brought in here so let's move create use that move com component and move that initial curve we're going to move it up in the Z direction and once we move up we're going to move up 
the same amount as the wall. So let's go for wall thickness, no, the wall height, yes, and then we'll use that same 120. And, and you see how we also have that vector Z here, so we don't even need to use this one. We can straight just go straight from that one here. And as you can see, we have brought that up. So what we want to do is just for this one do an extrude, plug that in, and we need to extrude in a certain direction. So we'll do in the Z direction, and we're going to extrude what amount? Let's do um, actually before we extrude that, let's create the boundary surface of that plane. So we'll, we'll go here, and as you can see, it kind of creates a plane on that rectangle, and that's what we will be extruding. And so now we have that here. We have we're going in the z direction, and this will give us the the option of the the thickness of the of the roof. So for the roof today, we'll put 12 inch. We'll do a 16 um, here for the for the roof. And so now we've successfully created that that roof height. So roof thickness here. And yes, this is, will be for a flat roof or a flat ceiling. Um, creating a sloped roof it, in Grasshopper is a little bit trickier um, than you might think. So for now, we'll be just kind of creating a building with a roof and a parapet above. And so I'll once again here, group it together. So now we know that this is the, the roof portion. Okay, so now that we've got that portion of the roof down, let's create the parapet. So, d doing kind of the same thing that we did here, moving it up, we want to move this curve up 16 inches. And that'll allow us to use that curve as the, the curve for the parapet. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to move this curve up. 16 inches so we're moving it up right now but it's not moving up so we'll go to the same roof thickness 16 inches up now that moved it up so whenever we adjust this it'll move up with it so 16 is where we are and here we can offset this curve and we can flip the direction so it offsets in instead of offsetting out and we can do it a distance of let's say four so that'll create that initial curve and this one which will give us the jumping off point for creating the parapet so let's do a boundary surface again plug that in here, plug the initial one here, and then flatten it to get that surface. And now we can extrude in the Z direction once again because we want to we need to give it a direction. We're gonna move the extrude up and we're gonna take this surface, extrude it up, and we'll say here 42 inches or 42. So that will give us a tall parapet wall on the outside. And so let's copy paste these panels here and start putting in and labeling everything. So this one's going to be parapet thickness, parapet height. And so now we have successfully created that. And let's group it together to 
keep everything organized as we've done kind of in the previous portions. And now at this point, if you've kind of followed along with the steps here, you should be at a point in which you have an entire building with the components of the walls, the foundation, the roof, and the parapet. And you should be able also to adjust them uh, and all of them kind of uh, work simultaneously. And the only tricky part is if at the beginning you start with a curve that's offsetting out, uh, it might not work so you might need to flip the direction of the curve but that's that's a very minor thing that you should be able to uh, account for but for now uh, you should also be able to hit a F10 here move that move these points around and also adjust and have that adjust accordingly so now we're gonna move on to creating the outside material so we can kind of finalize this uh, this script. So what we're going to be doing for that exterior material is the same thing that we've done for most of these is I'm going to hide it here with, with this button here the don't draw preview geometry. So we're still using that initial curve which it's going to create everything and that's what we want um, to to use for the exterior material. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna take that and we're gonna move it down. So we're gonna move this cur initial curb. And in architecture, you never want the exterior material to start right where the foundation meets the wall. You want to actually bring it down. So actually, I'm gonna bring this down in the Z direction a negative amount because I want to move it down so we're gonna move that curve that we brought in here we're gonna move it down and I'm just gonna put two just to kinda show that that's you know two inches down from where the foundation meets the wall and so now we're gonna take that curve and we're gonna offset it so we're going to offset this curve and this time it's offsetting out which is what we want because we want the material to be out so let's do a boundary surface between this this and we can flatten it and we can also change the thickness of the exterior material so we'll go one dot 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 um, you know six point zero and that's how you can kind of create a custom slider of one to six right, with the decimal so we'll go here distance of one we'll say uh, three inch exterior material and now we have this surface which is going to be the jumping off point to extruding that entirety of height so what we're going to be doing to account for all these heights at once is we're going to have to do some math we're going to have to do these two inches plus the wall height plus the roof height plus the parapet and that's what's going to give us the height of this so this surface we're going to extrude it because that's what we want, we want to extrude it all the way up to here and we're going to add we're going to do an addition of the two plus the wall height that'll give us 122 so 2 plus 120 we're going to add another one. We're going to have to add the, all of that plus the thickness of the roof. So we go here, roof thickness 16. Then we can bring that down here. Now we need to add another one because we have to add the height of the parapet. So we'll plug this into the top. So the results of that plus the parapet height. 
42. And that is what will give us the total height of 180, which then we can plug into here. And if you don't do a Z direction, which is the way you want to extrude, it's not going to work. You need to give it a direction. So we're extruding it 180 up, which is the summation of all the different heights. And that's so you can, um, you can, let's see, if you do the, the height of the parapet, you, it'll adjust with it. So if we have a lower one, and we have a wall height of 80, and you know, we can start, we can start playing around with the parameters and everything will add together accordingly here. So this is going to be the This is going to be, let's see, the exterior material. Um, drop. I guess that's what I'll call it. And then this one's going to be exterior material thickness. And that way we can kind of keep everything organized according to each component or each portion of the building. And so now that we have this, we can go ahead, come here into Rhino. We can start creating. I'm going to start um, here with the default. And I'm going to hit Tab and start with Layer 1. It's going to be Wall. And then hit Tab. Foundation, and hit tab, then roof, hit tab, parapet, hit tab, and then exterior mat. What that'll do is I can now go to walls, select walls here, go to walls, and I can Unpreview this first of all. Go here and then go to the walls. Hit spacebar, bake. Now that does the wall. Now I'm going to go to foundation and I'm going to go here, spacebar, foundation, then go to roof. Go here to roof, spacebar, bake. Then go to parapet. Go here to spacebar bake and then you can go to exterior material and come down here hit spacebar bake and once you kind of start looking here in Rhino you start seeing that okay we got the entire building here that we were looking for um, we can also do quick render and this could be a good jumping off point uh, for you know creating the the openings for the windows and doing the rest so it's a quick sketch and it's a really accurate jumping off point for uh, creating new designs so I hope you learned something new in this tutorial hopefully you learn and uh, you were able to follow along I'll make sure to you know add these things for you to be able to go over them um, thank you very much for watching make sure to uh, follow along in all my other classes. I'll be making sure to post those.